Hi, I'm Matt Passaccio and welcome to another season of the Senior Spotlight Show. Just like last year, we're going to effort towards getting as many seniors from as many different athletic programs throughout the city of Marlboro. And joining us here in studio today, we have Gabby Pereira, Jordan Child, and Mary Zou Harris, seniors from the Aspit Valley Girls Volleyball Team. Guys, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having, Thank you for having us. us. Well, not a problem. Uh, if you didn't know, the Aztecs are currently second in the Colonial League standings with a league uh, record of 8-2, and 10-4 and four overall. They just got done beating Keefe Tech yesterday, and they've got games against Abby, uh, Abby Kelly and Oxford later this week. Um, so this is really our opportunity here at WMCT to introduce you guys to the community. Um, so Gabby, we'll get started with you. Okay. Um, it's just been a couple of weeks into this uh, senior year, but how's it going to this point, and what's it like to finally be a senior? Um, it's really exciting. I really like the like environment that we're having this year. I feel like this year, it's just like we have a really good team going, and it's kind of scary being a senior because usually I'm the one to help plan the senior night, but this year the senior night's for us. So, I don't know. It's a little different, but I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited for anything in particular coming up throughout the course of your senior year? Um, I know. I'm just excited to graduate in general. <laughs> um, what shop are you in over at 80? Um, I'm at, um, oh my gosh, oh my <laughs> gosh. I'm in cosmetology. Okay. Uh, what was your main motivating factor in getting involved in that? Um, so, I actually went to ASBIT to be in health tech, and then there was like a mix-up in the system, so I ended up being put in cosmetology, but going into college, I want to focus in like the medical field. Sure. Um, do you think that the cosmetology and stuff like that might be something that you can use also? Maybe as you're going to school, you can do something like that on the side? Yeah, definitely. I want to use it as like a side hustle in college and stuff, Get make some extra money doing hair and stuff. Oh, good for yeah. you. There's always needs for second and third yeah. flows of income, so you're definitely. already ahead of the game. Good for you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jordan, how about you? How's uh, senior year going to this point? Um, it feels pretty surreal, like up until this point, because like going into it, I didn't really, it didn't feel like I was a senior until next week is our senior night. Wow. And then it's like we're not planning that this year. We have to get there late. We can't go in the gym until it's set up. And just all throughout high school, it's been us planning that, setting up the gym, and just suddenly it's not. Yeah, now all the attention gets to get put on you guys for all of your achievements over the past few years, so that's yeah. really nice. Um, which shop are you involved in over at I'm in painting and design. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, so we do, a lot, we do a lot of work around the town, actually. We, are, we just finished a job right down the street, a little gazebo. We just did some um, finish off on that. Okay. Um, we work on like elements of interior design. We use a program called Chief Architect and we do a lot of faux finish. That's one of our main projects sophomore year. We enter a contest and it's just like, there's a lot of different aspects to the shop and it just it makes the trade really fun to learn. Nice, do you think that that's something that you'll continue to pursue once high school is over or do you think you may deviate and go follow something else? It's something that I thought I would be pursuing but then I kind of just, after some thought, I realized what I did want to go into, which is a little different. I want to go into sports management instead. Very cool. So it was kind of like a little bit of a switch, but um, I just, I wasn't expecting to. I thought I would go into something trade related, but it's oh. just. But it's, it's good to get the experience of doing different things, not only to know what you want to do, but to know what you don't want to do. And that's just as valuable sometimes. So you're not, you know, wasting precious time in your early 20s. Mm -hmm. So good for you, really. Uh, Mary, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, can you tell me a little bit about how senior year is going for you so far? Um, it feels weird because I think every year I've always felt like I was supposed to be in the grade below. Like it doesn't feel like I should be a senior. I still feel like I should be in a, like a junior. And it's just the college stress has started to dwindle into my life. Yeah. But it just, sense. it feels weird to like have to you know like go to college soon and like live on my own soon and like thinking of those aspects of the future is kind of like scary sometimes oh for sure transition is always difficult doesn't matter what phase of life it is when you transition from high school to college college into young adulthood and then you start taking on more responsibility so getting accustomed to change and transition now is is very important um can you tell me about the shop that you're currently in yeah i'm in design and visual communications all right tell me what um, this year I'm focusing mostly on Mr. Whitney's side. Um, we're doing more of like branding and like focusing on like graphic design stuff. 
So I also had him freshman year, and that's how we start off. And then sophomore and junior year, we have Mr. May and um, Ms. Harper. And Ms. Harper focuses on photography. We did some branding with her, and we like would build our own brands, or like we did UX design. And then on Mr. May's side, we focus on like video. So we've worked with um, Westboro TV to like learn like about the like competition. Production. No, I'm <laughs> but um, so we like learn like live TV. We learn like just doing visual effects and like those kind of aspects. So we kind of like tackle everything that has to do with like visual anything yeah, really. Absolutely, that sounds pretty comprehensive. Do you plan on pursuing that post high school or? I think so. I've been on kind of like a back and forth of, I've always been interested in like art and like drawing and illustration, but I've always, my like main thing was I've never known if I wanted, like what specific thing I wanted to do with it. So sometimes I'm like, I could do graphic design as a side hustle while I do like a degree in like illustration or like game design or like animation, wow. depending what I wanted to do and figure that out. Wow, that sounds pretty complex, so good for you for taking that on at such a young age. Um, I'll, I'll ask this question to you as well. Uh, you know, you're in your senior year now. What advice would you give to somebody that's in your position but a year prior? So like you're a junior right now, it's September, October. What advice would you give to that person, knowing what you know now about where you are? I would Mary. say just do what you enjoy and make the most out of the time you have because it's gonna go by quick. And I've been happy with the choices I've made, like at participating in the clubs I was slightly interested in and trying it out. And like trying things and like going for it is always like important. Cause like, I guess even like this year, I was hesitant to do volleyball again cause I was like scared, but I went for it and I've had so much fun. So I think, especially in junior year, doing as much as you can and like finding that balance for yourself and like learning what's gonna work for you and not pushing like too many limits of yourself, I think is really helpful. Oh, that's a wonderful answer. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we're gonna switch a little bit towards athletics now, guys on the court. Um, Jordan, we'll start with you. Um, how do you see yourself as a competitor? Um, I think when I get on the court, I kind of have to be someone a little different than I am. I outside of volleyball I'm not very like outgoing not very shy and like especially as my position setter you cannot be shy you have to control the court you have to call the ball you have to tell people what to do help with rotation so I kind of in a way I have to be more outgoing I have to lead mm -hmm. in, a, in a sense like and, and what is that like to you know be named a captain you're a senior captain. There's a lot of responsibility that falls on you. You know, how have you kind of embraced that role? Um, I feel like it's kind of like, it feels very like honorable. Like when you're told at first, oh, you're a captain, especially the way we do it, we have people vote. So it kind of, it feels good that other people in the program look up to me mm -hmm. and see me as a captain and felt that they could vote for me. Gabby, how about you? How do you see yourself when you're out there? Um, I see myself as like a pretty competitive person. And like as a middle, I feel like I, I get in the setter's way a lot. So like when I get yelled at to like move out of their way or get to the ball faster, or this and that, I feel like I get in my head a lot. But I've noticed that you can't be a mental player. You have to just like play the game and not let it affect you. But overall, I think I'm a pretty competitive person wanting to get the win, I guess. Mm. I don't really know. <laughs> what does it mean to you to be a captain? Um, I also kind of say the same thing as Jordan. Being, like, knowing that other people voted for me to be a captain is, like, pretty, like, honorable as well because, like, they see me being able to pursue that role. They see me filling the expectations for that role. So I feel like I'm just, like, someone that they could look up to, I guess, and I feel like it's just a very big and, like, big position I'm grateful to have. Well, it, and it's, it is special. Yeah. You know, I played four years high school athletics. I was never a captain. There's millions and millions of people out there that have played years and years. They're never named captain. 
So you have to have desirable attributes. You have to be somebody that can handle the responsibility of other people looking to you that are looking for advice at times. So it's incredible. It really is. Um, Mary, how do you see yourself when you're out there as a competitor? Um, I'm outside of sports. I'm not really competitive at all. And I feel like volleyball, I do, like Jordan was saying, you kind of have to, it's not changing yourself, but like kind of letting that other part of you come out and like letting the other sit aside for a little bit. Um, I've really learned that this season, I think, and like playing on the court and stuff, I've really had to like trust myself and like trust others and just be ready and like continuously like fight for it. So it's like, I don't know what I was going to say after. Um, <laughs> No, that's, yeah. a, that's okay. I mean, that's a, that's a very good answer. Um, what about, you know, we're talking about flipping a switch, becoming this kind of alter ego out there on the court. Um, Mary, is there something that you do to get yourself amped up before a game, to, to get yourself to that next level? Is there like a, a routine, ritual, a, a particular song that you like to listen to? Is, is there anything like that that gets you to that level? I think for me, it's kind of like shutting out thoughts of like anything that's been happening in my day like previously because like if something happened in the pre like earlier in the day I kind of just like shut it out of my brain and I kind of tell myself right now like I'm playing volleyball and right now I have to like like want to win and like want to play and like to also like be energetic so other people can get energetic too nice. so I kind of like just tell myself don't think about these things right now but focus on this to like kind of start switching my focus. Compartmentalizing. Yeah. Nice. Jordan, how about you? Anything that you like to do to try to get that heart rate up before you go out there? Um, honestly, a big thing for me is I like to listen to music. It's, it just it puts me in the, like the setting that I need to be in, like especially like making like pregame like the warm-up playlist, like even things like that. Is that like, something that you're in charge of? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Um, so uh, name a couple of songs or a couple of artists that might be on that playlist. Um, <laughs> we, got some, we got some Drake. Okay. Um, we have... I feel oh. like it's a lot of rap. There's a lot of... like really there's upbeat a lot of rap. songs. Mm. Yeah. I like upbeat music. Um, it kind of takes... Like if I was feeling like down that day, listening to like a good song kind of boosts my mood. Okay. So... Like, if I'm sitting there and I'm just in my own thoughts, then it's just, it's not going to get me anywhere. If I'm hyping myself up, if I'm putting myself in the mentality that, hey, I'm about to play this game, I need to kind of, like, lock in, like... I totally, <laughs> I totally understand. I definitely get it. Uh, Gabby, how about you? Something that our team does in general is, like, we like to pray before every game. We do that before every game, and I feel like just not putting all of it on, like, god or whatever but like just knowing that like we all have like the power and strength to be able to do it it's like good knowing that and i feel like just that itself gives me like a lot of like power and i'm like okay let's go and then when i miss a ball i'm like oh i get in my head and then like i just think positive affirmations over myself it's like you've messed up once but you've also gotten like three other hits or something so like i just try to think of the positive side other than just like the one negative thing that happened Looking at a glass half full. Very yeah. nice. Good perspective to have when you're playing sports, that's for sure. A lot of things can happen throughout the a course of a game. You make one bad play, you look over, you got a bunch of people looking at you. It's very easy to get down. But if you keep that perspective and you have, you know, power through your faith, and that's, yeah. that's really great. Good for you. Thank you. Um, so I've, I've got some quotes here from uh, Coach Milliken and Athletic Director uh, Spencer Burton. I'll uh, read them off and, you know, However short or long you want to go, just give me your reaction to them, okay? Um, so, Gabby, we're going to start with you. This is from uh, A.D. Burton. Uh, Gabriella has shown her leadership throughout the season, both on and off the court. She has a great presence in the ASBIC community and works diligently to be the best version of a student athlete on a daily basis. And now from well, Coach Milliken. Uh, Gabby is our goofball. Oh. She's, always, <laughs> she's always smiling and reminding us that life's too short to sweat the small stuff. She's not showing, when she's not showing off her dance moves, oh. she's always going <laughs> to work, and this is shown on and off the court. Oh. When Gabby first came to Asbit, she was quiet but loved the game. She knew that she was competing to play middle with stiff competition. Gabby took her career at AV into her own hands. You would find her at four kicks on Friday nights improving her skills. 
She does this in life as well. Gabby has that no quit attitude and she instills that in our team and inspires girls to never give up. Oh, that's really so cute. I love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you have to say about that? Um, it's, it's, I love that she like sees those things and like Mills has always been someone I looked up to. Like whenever I messed up, I'm like, oh Mills, like what can I do to get better? So like her seeing me like being a goofball, but like also when I need to be in the game, I'm in the game is very heartwarming. That's so um, nice. Yeah. It's nice to, it's nice to have people that are responsible for you and these authority figures in your life notice certain things, you know, so that's really nice. She definitely also takes her leadership role as a coach, I would say. Yeah? Yeah. That's awesome. All right, Mary. Uh, this is from Coach Milliken. Mary is our silent leader. She shows how strong of a leader she is through her actions. She has a first, uh, first one in and last one out mentality. She doesn't see the floor often, but when her number is called, she is ready. Mary is the definition of understanding there is no I in team. Mary will stand for the entire game and cheer on her teammates, encourage them, and offer advice. Mary is reliable and always puts others before herself. She has been so successful at AV because of her work ethic. Mary does not need the spotlight, but she is a light in our program. And then uh, A.D. Burren. Uh, Mary is the hidden gem of the volleyball team. She is always the first one to show up and always willing to support her team. She is a crucial part of the success of the volleyball program and proves her value on a daily basis. That's really sweet. <laughs> um, how, does that, how, does it, how does it make you feel to hear such nice things from people that have watched you over the past few years? It's like really affirming, I guess, because it's like after putting like effort in like the past like three years towards it, it's really nice to always like hear like the coaches say those kind of things and like even like things not about like skill because I know sometimes like my skill isn't the highest on the team, but like to hear good things about just who I am and how I act like out off, off of the court and still like in the game is like always really kind. And just to have them notice those things and like think that way is like really kind and affirming. Yeah, and it's not always the most skilled person that's remembered. It's not always the best player that's remembered. You could have a teammate 20 years from now and be like, yeah, I remember Mary, she was so awesome. You know, she was so selfless. She was always there, just willing to encourage people. And that means the world to people. Like, you're hearing these nice things from people above you, but there's sophomores and juniors that are below you that will look to you every once in a while for that kind of advice, and they'll remember, for, they'll remember you for being so good to them. So good for you, really. Um, Jordan, this is from A.D. Burton. Uh, Jordan has proven her leadership starting in the summer. She went above and beyond to communicate with the volleyball team to host summer practices, which is directly shown in their success thus far this season. Jordan is a two-sport athlete who proves her talent in the classroom and on the court. And Coach Milliken? Jordan takes everything she does seriously and, and looks to always strive for perfection. She is always wanting to improve her game. What has made her so successful at AV is her willingness to be flexible. She is not a natural setter. She usually hits outside and sometimes right side. But when there's a need, Jordan will step up. She stepped into the role, worked hard, and continues to improve. No challenge is too big for jo uh, Jordan to conquer. How does that make you feel? It's just honestly the first thing that it made me think of was she sent out a message about a game that got moved, and she put the hashtag stay flexible. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to kill me for saying that, but um, that's what it reminded me of at first. But honestly, like kind of what off of what Mary said like it's not always like hearing like the compliments about how you're playing it's hearing it as how you are as a captain how you are as a person um it just it really it kind of affirms how you're feeling like if you're feeling like oh I haven't been playing the best like I haven't been making my serves my hits have been going out just hearing like recognition for how you're trying or how like your attitude is on the court or even just like small things like hearing like Spencer comment on like leadership. Like it's just, it just gives like a positive aspect to the sport even when you're feeling down and it's just always nice to hear. And the fact that you, the three of you really, have worked so hard in the classroom and on the court and in the community and you have all these people saying these such nice glowing things. I mean, it's, it's really a tribute to the three of you and what you've meant to the community at AV, so really good for all of you. Um, 
Now we're going to switch over to the shout out portion of the uh, interview. Um, <laughs> it's the floor is yours. You can tell me, you can tell the camera, um, you know, who has helped you and why do you want to thank them the way that you do? Um, I'll give you a second. Mary, how about we start with you? <laughs> oh. Um, can you just let me know who you'd like to shout out? Like anyone? Anybody in your life that has helped you get to this point that you love dearly and you know, has been there for you? I would have to say my friend Violet. She's always pushed me to like do more and like try and like put in that extra effort. And I think ever since like we became friends, like I started to like just have that extra care in life and like that extra push and extra drive and like everything I do and like really care about those little things. And, you know, it's just like, I have to thank her for like the way I see everything sometimes because she really helped have that grow in me. That's so sweet. That really is nice. <laughs> um, anybody else? Or are you just... Um, you, you could keep it there if you like, no worries. And if you think of somebody by the time I get to the end, we can always go back to you. We can come back. I don't okay. Know. <laughs> Jordan, how about you? Is there anybody that you would like to shout out that's helped you get to this point? Yeah, I'll start with um, my mother. She actually is one of the people on the coaching staff for us of it. Um, but she's just, she's always been there, like every step of the way, like every moment in volleyball, like even just like with life, she's always been there like to help me. She's always given me advice. She's always told me when I'm doing something wrong or she'll give me like the harsh truth. She'll be like, Jordan, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, she kind of just tells me what I need to hear and it gives me a lot of respect for her. Um, and then just the fact that like she's my mother, I know she would do anything for me and I feel like that's just something that I've always been able to look up to. It's awesome. I feel that way about my mom too, so that's very cool. Um, Gabby, how about you? Is there anyone that you would like to shout out? Um, also my mom and my brother, because they both always show up to like most of my games, and even if we win or lose the game, they always give me and my sister like constructive criticism after the game. They're like, oh, you can do this and this to get better. And I feel like they've always just been there to watch me play, but not only to watch me, but to help me also grow and get better. So I just wanted to thank them for always just like, seeing the good sides of stuff, but also being able to help me when I'm not doing the best in other areas. Yeah, yeah. Tough, tough love is important. Yeah. You know, and having a couple of stepkids at home that are 14 and 12, and you try to give them some constructive criticism once a month, it doesn't really go so <laughs> great. So hearing that you guys are appreciative of that tough love and constructive criticism is very nice. <laughs> um, but unless any of you have anything else? Um, no? I feel like I do. I just need to like... I know. I just need to like <laughs> really think. I think I do. I was going to say like my parents because they always like push me to do stuff as well and like encourage me to like do what I enjoy and also thinking realistically too which I really appreciate because sometimes it's easy to think about oh what I really want and those things but kind of also have to you have to take the step back and be like how realistic is this and like what's going to work in this moment but they really are always like there for me and like try and like you know, I don't know. Wait. No, that's that, that's very nice and well said. Anybody else? Oh uh, yeah. Um, I do want to shout out my shop teacher, Mr. Tanelli. <laughs> um, he's just he's someone that I see as a leader, not only as a teacher, but he kind of me and the other girls and the one guy in my shop. He's just always been there to guide us. Um, he not he's taught us everything we know about our trade. And like, I think that's one of the most important things, but it's also the fact that he sees us as more than just his students. Um, and he just kind of like, like a lot of times they'll just be sitting in our related room and he'll just be giving us like advice. Like we'll go around, we'll talk about our weekend and he'll like, we'll discuss what we're doing. And like, if we need anything, like there have been times when I've gotten to school and I'm not in the best mood and he notices that type that type of stuff. He mm -hmm. notices it in me, he notices it in my classmates. Um, and he's just always like, he'll pull us to the side, he'll check on us. Um, if there's something we need to talk to him about, he's always there to listen. And like, if we have something to ask him, like he has certain rules, I feel like every teacher does. But if there's something like, especially we have to put our phones away during the day, like there have been times where we're like, hey, like 
we're expecting this call. Like, we'll explain what happens, then he'll let us keep it on us. Like, he's understanding of it. And then he'll ask us, like, throughout the day, like, hey, have you gotten, have you heard what you need to hear yet? Mm -hmm. Have you gotten that text yet? Um, how's it going? Like, That's so and it's nice. just, it's just, I feel like I can really look up to him and he's just someone that I see as a leader in my life. And I feel like the other kids in my shop do too. That's very well said. And I hope that somebody says something that nice about me someday. <laughs> That's <laughs> very nice, really, guys. Um, that was one of the best shout out segments we've had in these uh, senior one spotlight. More. You have one more? Yes, oh, the witness here. We're not even done yet. We have more to come here. <laughs> okay, so um, I just wanted to give a shout out to Coach Mills. You know, Mills is like my girl. Like, I literally <laughs> love her with my whole heart. I feel like she really takes on the position as a leader. And even though we can like joke around with her, we can also look up to her. And like Jordan said with her, shop teacher it's like someone that we can like look up to when they notice when we're down if we need a second out of practice she'll let us step aside she'll ask us how we're doing and she'll just like she really cares she's like our long lost sister like <laughs> i don't know um i just wanted to give her a shout out for always being there for all of us and not just me but yeah well, i'm sure she appreciates that yeah and definitely second that one yeah, yeah. <laughs> and third it that was very sweet um well I just want to thank the three of you for coming in today. I know that you're coming straight from a practice, and I'm sure you have homework, and it's a very busy time in your life. So thank you kindly. We really do appreciate you. Of course. Thank, thank you for having us. Not a problem at all. Um, this episode, the first one of this new season, along with all of the old episodes from season one, all the Marlboro Shamrock football podcast episodes can all be found throughout our plat our, across our platform of uh, social media accounts. You know, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can find these videos on our website as well, wmct-tv.com. Um, if you're in the car a lot, you like to listen to podcasts, the audio version of these can also be found wherever you stream your podcasts. So once again, thank you to Mary, Jordan, and Gabby for being here. I'm Matt Passaccio, and we'll see you next time. Cool. I started on the first part.